All right, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Um, welcome to today's stream, and thank you to everybody who was also in last night's stream. Um, been kind of experimenting with the idea of having super regular streams um, because of everything that's been happening, and this was the first full week of doing that. So um, I think it went pretty well. I'm going to stick on my headphones here so I don't miss any... PC audio cues. Um, yeah, so we'll hang out for a few minutes before we get started with today's video where we'll be doing a little bit of continuation from last night's stream since we kind of went down the capture rabbit hole a little bit. And um, yeah, should be should be fun. Um, so we will continue with our work in this imaginary stage in Capture. And today I wanted to focus on the, uh, the data management side of Capture um, and how to, how to export all of this data into MA so that we can program offline with it and use the MA3D visualizer because a lot of people, including uh, myself, do not have enough parameters to program a stage uh, of this size. Um, for my template stage and the, the stage that you see me use in other streams, that's, um, that's purely my like time coding template stage where everything is like nice, even numbers, there's like six of every fixture type in each area. Um, and like the most common fixtures and a bunch of custom stuff. So yeah, um, that stage is more, that, that's less of like a, a cool creative stage and more of a utilitarian, it's literally a tool, um, that I use to make time coding easy and make it scale to other stages. Um, so I think it would be fun. I did just put in a bid on an NPU, um, so if I did get that NPU, that would be enough to probably run most of this stage. Um, but I'll show you some tricks on how you can turn universes on and off to um, help with your programming if you are limited on parameters, because unfortunately that little NSP that I have does not count in the, uh, the console system for, uh, for having parameters, which is a topic that I've wanted to... Um, make a video on. I, I've made a, I've tried to make this video a couple times, but I ended up pretty much scrapping them. Uh, talking about what parameters are exactly, why they are the way that they are, what counts as a parameter, um, and what types of systems add up parameters. Uh, just for, for example, um, one of the most common misconceptions about console systems with MA2 is that if you are short on parameters and you add another console to the system, it does not add parameters. Um, you're only, only the largest console in your system will add parameters, right? So if you start with an MA2 Lite, which has 4,096 parameters, and you're like, oh shoot, we have like 8,000 parameters. And you'd be like, oh, well, we've got another MA2 Lite at the shop. If you bring an MA2 Lite, into the session with the MA2 light, you're still capped out at 4,096. You, the only way you can add to a console system is if you add NPUs. So I went ahead and put in a bid on NPU. I tried to buy one a few weeks ago, but that didn't happen. And I've just been waiting for them to come up for sale. Any tips for creating time-coded shows that translate well to different stages? Yeah, have like... Um, like I said, the template stage that's super basic and has like, you know, three trusses with six beams, six spots, six washes. And you can just make a grid and program that way. Okay, um, I think we'll hop over to Capture and just kind of get right into it. I'm anticipating a slightly shorter stream, like maybe two hours, hour and a half, two hours. Um, but we left off yesterday with this stage. Uh, we ended up getting it to the point where we could control our we could control these uh, 
the vertical positions of all of these, uh, what do I want to say? I call them chevron trusses. So we have not only vertical control, but tilting control of them as well. And uh, then I went and added the people that I have in my other stage with their little phones in their hands. Um, we'll also be talking about how to bring Resolume Arena into Capture and how you can get an output on stage. I've talked a little bit about that in different streams, but I'll, we'll do it a little more exactly. Oh, there's a Resolume update. I wonder what this could be. Let's see if there's anything good in this update. Uh, a few bugs and crashes, but improved gradient. Oh my god, thank goodness. Crash creating 257th Lumiverse. That, Lumiverse, that could actually affect me. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Anything good, anything good. Nope, 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 nope. I mean, this is all good stuff for other people, but for me, it's not stuff that really... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll skip this for now. So uh, I do have those phones linked to the Resolume comp. So everybody's phone will take on whatever is on the screen. Um, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. Just kind of want to show you where we where we got the stage two. Christian, the kind of guy that reads the patch notes. I love reading patch notes. I mean, sometimes there's like stuff that I didn't even know was a problem and fixes another problem that I had. Love reading patch notes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, we've, we've got our stage in here. We've got it more or less plotted. I'm going to be adding some more stuff, but... Um, this is this is like the the meat and potatoes of it for right now. Um, I'm going to get rid of these little vertical supports because this I'm going to talk about in a different video when we come up with a plan to actually make this maybe plausible in real life. There's a lot of there's a lot of limitations here, but like I said, this is an imaginary stage, just meant to be something that looks cool and is fun to fun to see on a screen but would be an absolute disaster <laughs> to try to build in real life. I mean, you could. People build crazier stuff, but the, just with how much mass is in this like one condensed part of the rig, it, it's, it's literally massive. Um, combined with the amount of stress that you put on such a large circular vertical structure trying to lift it in one piece, um, the hint is that you wouldn't lift it in one piece. You would have to segment it and then ground support, probably the lower lower half. You could get uh, you can basically you could also do like reverse bridles bridles where you have two motors going to one point, but that's a different story altogether. So let's talk a little bit about naming and numbering schemes in capture. Um, I have all my fixture types sorted out by color, but when you're looking at them on a patch sheet or something like a fixture report patch, colors don't really help when it comes to seeing a long list of fixtures. So instead, I break things up into sets of 100, which is pretty industry standard. And um, I break them up into sets of 100 based off of their fixture type. So, for example, uh, 101 fixture number 101 through 100 and or 100 and 199, technically 200, but I don't, we don't ever go that high. That range of fixtures is specifically for spot fixtures, um, and I tend to leave those in red. Now we have six per truss behind our main stage assembly here. And when I select these and hit enter, Capture pulls up, 
It's called the properties window. If you're using, if you're used to using Vectorworks, this is kind of like the OIP, or the object information palette. Um, this is where you can change the properties of the fixtures or whatever you've selected. Um, uh, you cannot do things like uh, in 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 Vectorworks. You can put like math functions in here in any of these fields. You cannot do that in Capture, but it does do like distance and size translation. So if your project is in feet and you need to make something at a metered position, you can type in like 2m for 2 meters, and it'll translate it for you. But it won't do any more complex math stuff. But in here, once uh, we have our fixtures of this particular type selected, uh, and we can see in here, and this is a little different than in older versions of Capture. I think in 2019 and above, they started creating different tabs for every type of fixture that you selected. So, oh no, they haven't. My mistake. They do have, let's see here. So this is only in the control section. If you select multiple fixture types, if I select these two different types, um, you can see in the control section, you can change different modes um, of those selected fixtures. But that's the only thing you can do with multiple different types. So I'm going to select an order from stage right to stage left. These are the Ayrton Huracans, which are apparently ridiculously bright. I haven't gotten to use any in the real world. Maybe one day. Uh, but these are going to be kind of the main spot fixture for the stage part. Um, I do also have these huge beam fixtures out here, which I'm going to put them in entire, an entirely different number range. Uh, but they currently are assigned to the same layer, which is giving them this color on the screen. This is called screen color. All of these like different Lego type neon colors. That's referred to as screen color in your layers tab of the des or of the design tab and the layers window. So I've got these 12 hurricanes selected. And in Vectorworks, you have spotlight numbering, which is a way of sequentially numbering things based off of an order that you determine. But in Capture, we are not as blessed, unfortunately. You'll have to go in. Um, you can like you know do selections like this, but it's it gets sketchy for me when you get more intricate with selection. I would I would rather just manually select everything. Uh, and to make this easier, I've also built a custom filter called the addressing filter. So in the addressing filter, if you look over to the right here, so if you if you highlight a filter that you want to modify, over in the layers and universes tab, it'll show you what is included as a visibility. In Vectorworks, this would be like the navigation pane where you can select whether to uh, invisible or gray or visible different classes and layers. The mic seems more quiet than usual. No, I mean, it's at the same level on, uh, on my meter. Thank you for tuning in, though. So if I've got this addressing filter open, I can look in here and see that all of my fixture types, which I have prefixed with an exclamation mark just so that they always go to the top of the list, those are all included in this filter. So none of this stuff, and then I keep all the universes. So if I drag this addressing filter onto any of my views, so we've got the alpha view on the top left, the beta view on the top right, and then gamma view down below. If I drag that filter onto this view, it removes the visibilities of those not included layers and universes. <clears throat> so I'll go through. And then uh, in this way, you can probably select a little easier, although it still sketches me out. If you 
accidentally select the wrong way first, just like in MA, you can kind of screw it up. So I just go through and manually select. I found that it saves me more time in the long run than having to redo it five or six times throughout the course of running a show. Okay, so we've got our first 12 selected. Go to our gear icon. There's a lot of cool tools underneath here. And you can see their shortcuts as well. So if I want to sequentially channel these, and this is one of the intricate kind of annoying things that isn't explicitly stated in any of the documentation. If you want to export to MA2, you have to use channel as your numbering scheme. You can't use unit. I was used to using unit for the longest time, um, but unit has a different purpose. And I'll, I'll show you that as soon as I finish going to channel here, go channel, and then we can start at fixture number, or channel number 101. And when we hit assign, if we now go over to our fixture tab, and since we are sorted by channel now, you can see we have our Huracons. And if I just click through them, we can see that they go in order in a way that makes sense. Now, I was talking a little bit about unit and the unit field. Unit, uh, think of that as what you want that item that you've selected you want what you want its name to be, like its recognizable name in your show. So for uh, these Huracons, I want to name them Huracon. So if I hit Control Shift T, that is the shortcut for selecting all of the same fixture type of anything that you already have selected. So if I have a Huracon selected and a Stilo selected, if I hit Control Shift T, it's going to select all of both of those fixture types. Same thing with layer. So if I have multiple types of fixtures, but I don't want to select all the types, I just want to select one layer of them, um, I could, for example, select a JDC. And uh, if I had other, we'll use this as a demo real quick. Let me switch over all of these sense strips to the layer strobe so they'll turn yellow on the screen so if i wanted to select all of this same layer without having to go through and select different fixture types since the jdc's and the sun strips are in the same layer Control shift l will select everything in that layer so now we're back to normal i hit Control z to undo i hope i didn't undo too far let me see here I did go one too far. <laughs> okay. So, as we were saying, the unit field is more for naming things for ease of recognize, recognizing them. If I go over to paper color, which I did by hitting, oh, I got a counter offer on the NPU. I'll have, to, I'll have to reply after we're done with this stream. So if we're here in paper mode, so you've got wireframe, paper mode, and then you also have the custom view mode which is this uh, live, it's not live view. Live view is rendering. There's also this uh, stage live, or uh, custom view mode, I think is what it's called. Let me see here. Yeah, custom. So if I switch over to paper, this unit field is, like I said, it's like the name of whatever you have selected. And it will always show up um, on the paperwork of whatever is named. You might say, well, that's like the red on black is kind of hard to read. And I would agree. So you can go to layers and you can do this a couple of ways. And there's a difference between the screen color and the paper color. So this is screen color. If I were to go in here and change this to magenta. Wait, what? Are these not on the spot? Oh, these are in the wash one layer. My mistake. 
I'm going to change these to that layer because they should be on the spot layer. So now, just like before, I can change these. Um, the paper color, though, and I tend to keep the uh, I tend to keep the screen colors as a very very saturated, uh, you know, looks like Lego bricks basically, because it's easy to see against the black background. Um, but if you have text involved, like I'm talking about with this paper view. It can be kind of hard to read the, the red and black combination. So you can do this one of two ways, and I do this kind of interchangeably. You can either desaturate the color of your paper solid. There's three paper options. There's the paper color, which is the outline. There's the paper solid, which in other software is called fill. And then there is the text color option. So again, it's a lot more basic than Vectorworks, but it's also very easy. I found that white is pretty easy to read on a black background. So I'm going to keep those that way. Um, if, for example, uh, and this happens semi-frequently, if these are like Viper performances, and I have the name like Viper performance, and it goes off the edge for whatever reason. Of course, I could just shorten this to performance. I'm just using this as an example. Um, a lot of times, I'll go back to regular black text. And then you can just desaturate to make it a lot more visible. But I want to go back to this, the white text. Uh, okay, here's a good thing in chat. I heard a rumor that MA will let MA on PC communicate with third-party previs, uh, previs such as Capture, Depends, or LC. Have you heard anything about this? Yeah, there was a post on one of the MA forums by Rene. He's an admin over there. I think he, I'm pretty sure he works for MA. I can't remember if I met him at ProLight and Sound a couple years ago. I feel like I did. I could be totally wrong on that. Um, anyways, the... What they, what they said is that MA3, so not MA2, MA3, they are working on a, a driver, basically, sounds like, for other or a, a, speci a specific um, protocol for talking to 3D visualizers. Because MA has a huge, a huge challenge in making sure that their software isn't used for free, because they provide the software for free. They need it. They need to be able to monetize their <laughs> the development of both the hardware and software. And if they make the software free, and someone finds a way to, if someone finds a way to, uh, the noise gate is disturbing. Uh, you can close the window if you want. The uh, the part the part that doesn't make sense to me is MA two has a free three D visualizer. And it's actually pretty good. If you've seen some people with, um, if you've seen some people in the MA forums, they have these ridiculous looking renderings all done in MA 3D. And you get all of the parameters 100% for free. So I don't really see it as like a huge issue. Like before I had Capture, I used MA 3D for everything. And for this, guess what? I'm going to have to use MA 3D because I don't have enough parameters. And that's totally cool. Um, but with MA 3, it looks like enough people have um, have brought it up to them that they want to um, they want to have a driver for this and that takes a lot of development time on both their behalf and all of the all the visualizer companies and then it becomes an issue of like okay well who who gets access to the protocol what is that agreement what does that agreement look like and what um, yeah just what what does that look like for MA because if they release this information on how to like There'll be there'll have to be some very very complex things to make sure that it doesn't get that the the protocol doesn't get hacked. But it won't happen for MA two. No matter how many petitions you create. The headset mic in my videos is a DPA forty one eighty eight. 
Um, if you're ever curious about what gear I'm using in any particular video, there's usually all the links in the description. Okay, so back to this. So we talked about unit. We've talked about channel, which is automatically populated in this circular circle <laughs> below. Um, this is also considered a symbol. Now, why do I say it's considered a symbol? Well, this is a 2D representation that is in the capture library, and you cannot customize symbols, which is another downside compared to Vectorworks. But I'm not talking about comparing this to Vectorworks right now. We're just going to talk about how you can use Capture um, a little more easily. Um, oh, also, you can change the, the weight of the outline. So if I change this to like 2, it will embolden. I think 1.5 is good. So uh, like I was saying, with symbols, they are a 2D representation because as soon as you go off axis, let me just drag off here, it's no longer the same, it's not the same thing. It's just a 2D representation and you can swap out symbols. This is one of the things that uh, I don't think people realize. In the library tab, if you're like, man, this, like I wanna use a symbol so that it's easy to read, you can use other symbols. So if you really like the, uh, the Viper symbol, you can just drag it on. And yet it looks like a Viper, but that's not the point. If you have a symbol that you particularly like, and this is where I really wish that, that uh, Capture would allow you to create like custom symbols like this, just 2D line drawings basically, But we can go back to uh, maybe the BMFL. The BMFL one, I think, is pretty good. Yeah, so we'll just do that. Because that's a little more accurate to the size of the fixture, I believe. In addition to that, if you don't want to mess around with symbols at all, you can hit Enter to go to the Properties tab. Scroll down to the plot symbol and go to this usage thing. <laughs> and you can say, okay, I only want this to be in top views, which is currently what it's in. You can have it in always, which does not mean 3D. You're not gonna have a 3D symbol. But if you snap to any orthogonal views, you're gonna have the symbol which may or may not make sense depending on what kind of fixture, right? Because in any orientation, this symbol is going to be the same. I tend to leave this on never. Okay. It just depends on the type of show. Sometimes top always works well. But for example, if you have angled things, it just doesn't look as it should, like here. And we'll go into this a little later when I go through and patch these. But if I turn symbol usage to never, it looks a little more accurate to what it's supposed to be. See? Whereas if I go to always, then it's just kind of weird. So I, I tend to, almost always, on all of the shows that I do, with the exception of like corporate events where there are source fours or anything that the symbol is actually useful for, I'll select all my fixtures, go to the, go to the selected items, go to symbol usage, and just click never. Again, it's useful for some things, useful for some types of shows, but I don't find it particularly useful for what I'm doing. Now, since we have these 12 Huracans up here, we need to add some more information to these. Uh, the next thing that I would probably do would be figure out the mode that we want to use these in. Um, depending on 
whether or not this is a real show and whether or not you actually need to build this in the real world, that will be a huge determining factor in what kind of modes you choose and how you organize your universes. So again, this matters as far as selection order. So I'll change this to our paper. Go to live view with our addressing filter applied. And I know that these trusses are gonna be split up by universe. And I want to have everything in extended mode so that later I can swap them back to a lesser mode and the, the start address will remain the same. And I suggest that you do that too. Unless you have for sure determined exactly which fixture types, exactly which modes you need to use, and you're doing it for like a real show, I would say start by patching everything in extended. That way you don't have to deal with any overlaps. And then you can have a patch that works for everybody. And if, for example, you have an LD, let's take it like take a festival, for example. You have an LD that wants to use everything in full extended mode, and you have another LD who wants to use everything in basic mode. If you have everything patched at the extended mode addresses, but still in basic mode, everything will still work. You can't do it the other way around. Why no music? Oh, that's just because I don't want to have music right now. Do you want me to take the, uh, maybe I, let me just take off. So just so you know, this is what it's like without the noise gate. Where did I get the Roby beanie? Uh, from my mailbox. I just, it showed up. Okay, so we'll do addressing on this first set. And instead of going into the sequential patch window, which you can do, totally fine, I would instead suggest going over to the universes tab, highlighting your first universe. And first, let me just clear everything out here. Reset external universe, reset external levels. And just drag. Actually, did I change these to the right mode? I did not. So I'll switch all these to extended mode. Getting ahead of myself. Go over to our universes tab and drag them in. Hey, 420. Funny numbers. We'll do the same thing with universe B. And now you can see that uh, our universe information has already been populated. Having first learned Capture, Argo, and Atlas, and more recently WYSIWYG, latest version R42, should I go back to Capture, move to Spotlight? Uh, use Spotlight for non-rendering things. So 3D modeling, it's great. Dimensions, great. Um, really detailed plots, super great. But for visualization, I still like using Capture. Okay. And from here, you can also add in your, 
What do I want to say? You can add your sequential uh, circuit information. So ML1 would be like our preset or prefix, excuse me, and start at one. You can do this, um, this overlap thing will essentially gang fixtures together. But since, uh, let's see, how many watts do these even take? I don't even know. Probably a ton. Let me see. Does it show that in here? <laughs> yeah, 1.4 kilowatts. So we'll probably separate those. So we go sequential, circuit, ML1, dash one, assign circuits. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to circuit every single thing in this show file. Change our prefix to ML2. Cool. So there is all of our plot information. Uh, but it's kind of weird because it's set up like this. It's kind of strange. Um, this is due to the fact that you can move annotations around with respect to their original origin. <laughs> Control Shift A, when you have things selected, will select only the annotations. So you see the red background is highlighted just the annotations. Then from here you can break the chain and move it to a more appropriate thing. The thing about this uh, movement of annotations is it is per view, right? Per orthogonal view. So if we hop to the top, we can move it around. You would never really use a side view for plot information, but you can. In addition to this, you can also move the entire selection on just pay-per-view. So remember, we've got our chain links. This chain link breakage means that you are changing the position on just the pay-per-view. Your original 3D view will not change, or your wireframe view. But let me just show you here. I'll turn off our filtering. So I'll go to views, no filter. And you see we're in the top view. And I have enabled this chain link break mode. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Come on. Let me move you. Not sure why they wouldn't let me do it when they were selected together. So it stays in the same position in the real world, but in our pay-per-view, it has created a new non-ghost version underneath. So the ghost version is where it exists in our wireframe, and this pay-per-view is where it exists on our pay-per-views. And this is different for Again, every single view. So this is good for if you have a lot of trusses that are overlapping and you need to make them more e easily distinguishable. But I don't really want that, so I'm going to go in here, select Clear Plot Adjustments, which of course messed up my annotations, but I can do that real quickly. OK, so I'm going to go through and just quickly number and do the same thing with the rest of these fixture types, which won't be that quick. But I'll promise I'll do it as, as fast as I would normally do it without actually talking to you guys. Oh. It's also helpful if you select these in your fixture window. But my problem is I don't think I imported these all in the same order. So I think that they would be out of order. Yeah, see, like if I just started selecting them from the beginning, 
can't win them all. So we'll just carefully go through here one by one. And I tend to set my beam fixtures to the 200 series. So just starting at 201. Now you guys can enjoy the background noise because all of my previous streams are uh, inel ineligible for copyright, which is fine. I wasn't intending them for, for them to be. But I would like one stream a week to maybe be eligible for copyright. Is that OK? <laughs> Sequential channel 201. Did I add the crowd one by one? No. They came in a pack of like low poly people. So I think it was like a pack of 12 people. And then I just kind of scattered them around and rotated them a little bit. And then you just make a couple smaller groups and then you rotate a few of those within there and like change the heights and the elevations of each one. Change them around. I mean, you'll still get stuff like these two people like no two people would have a banner holding them exactly the same way right next to each other. Um, yeah, just like rotate them a little bit, duplicate the group, and then just do that a couple times and randomly distribute them. Then you're golden. I am, uh, <laughs> am going to come up with a way to block the phone from the other side because right now this is like cool from this angle, but if you view the stage... The materials are transparent, or they're double-sided. So you see the phones on the other side as well. Still working on that. Have I heard of light converse? Of course. All right, I'll catch up with chat for a second. This is not for any particular event. Cookie Sniper, thanks for the comment. Appreciate that. Please tell me your opinion, Capture versus WYSIWYG. I've never used WYSIWYG, so I can't give my opinion on it. OK, continuing on. This is going to be the fun one to do. I almost want to create a new filter just for addressing these. Nah. Eh. These are all uh, lead beam 150s. But I might swap them out for spikies. But the lead beams have that really, really, really narrow beam. Uh, with these fixtures, we are going to go over our 100 fixture. Uh, not, oh my god. If you select a fixture that's already in a group, then you basically screw up your whole process unless that group was created in the same order that you want to that you want to uh, use them in. So I might do that for each ring of these, but I doubt it. It's another thing with um, fixture groups new in 2020. Screw it. We'll try using that feature. How about that? This is the tedious part that they don't always talk about, and it's not so glamorous.
It's lawless land out here in Issaquah. I don't know if the pickup pattern on my mic is too OP for you guys to hear that. There's someone with a what sounds like SRT4. running through uh, neutral gear. You guys hear those people laughing out there, right? I thought there was a quarantine going on. No, Christian, turn the gate off. Turn the gate off. This is what you get. There's no free, uh, what's that called? No free lunch? So you either, you either take the, the gate coming on and off or Becky talking to her friend who just brought over a a cheesecake. And the typing of my uh, cherry blues. Yeah, the reason I'm uh, showing this one on stream and not any other, like, more, I guess, reasonable design is because um, everything I've been working on in Capture lately is for actual projects, projects, um, because I still do have a little bit of actual work, thank God. And this is, like, a really old one that didn't really have anything else going on, but it's still big and easy to show how to use it. It's another reason why I like the uh, the headset mic because when I have the when I have the gate on, it's it like literally pops on the second I start just like breathing out. So it's like it only picks up what I'm saying. It's so sick. That was the best money I ever spent. Except when I forget to plug it in because it's actually hardwired with an XLR into my audio interface. Okay, so now we have all of the spikies numbered up. No, sorry, wait, what the heck, Stelos. We have those grouped. I haven't numbered them yet. So now theoretically, if we go over to group, I select these in order. We should be able to go channel, sequential channel. Um, I have a feeling we're going to run, how high, how high do we go on these? Into the, oh, 420. <laughs> <laughs> There's, of course there would be a hundred and, oh my God. Like, what are the odds that both universes of the Huracans in extended mode would would be 420? And then the number, the ending channel number 
of all of the spikies that I like randomly populated in here would also be 420. Didn't plan that. Um, I am going to temporarily move all of these up to 1301 simply because the way my macros work in MA, it will mess things up with the grouping. Seller made a counter offer. Okay. We need a CJ angry emote for the server. I don't get angry. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, next up we have our JDC ones. Da, da, da. I think going forward, I'm I'm gonna be live streaming. So th this whole f first week was kind of an experiment to see if enough people were interested in it, and I think I think we're at the point where like the novelty of people coming in by getting. Um, like random people coming in on YouTube is like past. And I think if we just do live streams on Twitch and then immediately publish the stream recording to YouTube so that people get that like notification of the YouTube video, I think that'll be a smarter way to do all this. What do you guys think? I want to make sure I'm not like doing something that would would hurt what we're doing here. So what do you think? Is do you guys like the idea of streaming on Twitch and then publishing with chat replay on YouTube? Or do you like only like I just feel like the the YouTube streaming community is so much smaller that you don't get like the growth of random people stopping by and being like, "Oh, I had no idea that, what is this?" And I think that would be interesting to see on Twitch. How many universes in this show? Well, that's what we are going to figure out as soon as we patch this. I'm going to guess. Um, oh, I think, again, with MA, universes don't really matter. It's the parameters that matter. But I think, hmm, I'm going to go with, We're going to end up at uh, 42 universes. We could stream on both YouTube and Twitch, but I feel like it'll kind of fracture the viewership. Twitch has a lot more like integration with um, with chat and emotes and like all that stuff if you if I actually invest in the time to do it. I, I, yeah, I've got I've got restream uh, I've got restream, but I don't like streaming to multiple platforms at once. Okay, eBay, stop emailing me about the NPU. I get it. Actually, that would be, be kind of cool if we bought an NPU on stream. Let me see here. I'm going to submit a counteroffer. You guys can't. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now. Purchase history, watching... Why do they not show me? Hmm. I don't want to waste too much time on this if I can't immediately find it. Review offer. Mm. Nah, they're asking too much for it. I want to spend $4,000 on an NPU. Tops. I know it'll happen eventually. And Becky, I don't care about your cheesecake down there. They're still talking. They're like gossiping. You better be six feet away. I'm gonna look. Yeah, they're breathing all over each other. Oh, my lighting's all messed up now.
That's Carol Baskin. That's 100% Carol Baskin out there. She was wearing a mask, though, so. Oh, yeah, I'll throw my Corona bottle out the window at them from last night. Yeah, we'll put in every, we'll put everything in extended mode once I start patching. This is this part's going to be a little more complex with the patching, so I want to number them first. Because remember, uh, channel counts are based off of or channel IDing, fixture IDing, whatever you want to say, is more based off of the location within groups of fixtures, but addressing is based off of the location in context of all fixtures. Because addressing does have physical limitations. You can't just like select the stage and hit auto address. It actually takes some thought. Don't you know there's a war going on? Play time code on a speaker out the window and they'll leave. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, let me let me put the Twitch. I'm gonna put the Twitch information in the stream. Give me one second. Also, does anybody have a working tool for getting this? You see this on-screen overlay for volume? I've I've tried using different tools that I I googled for like 30 minutes, but I cannot actually find a legit way to get rid of that over or the on-screen display. Okay, mine is Twitch. Are we live? Hello? That was scary. What did I do? I didn't do anything. My uh, bit rate just dropped to zero. That was weird. I think it's because I posted the Twitch link. Sorry about that. Maybe I luck out and that sends out a new round of notifications. So I'm curious, how many of you guys are watching, like, did you see, did you get a notification or did you see on my page? How did you know that this stream was happening? Just a real quick in the comments. Channel, this will be 401. Yeah, I'm not sure what caused all of those um, dropped everything. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I really don't. Um, again, the only reason I have the MA2 in session right now is so that we can see the parameters in uh, Capture. But I'm going to do this in MA3D as soon as we get over there. Whew. OK, so we have the spikies, the JDCs. Oh my god. I accidentally did the wrong thing. So I'm going to put, ah, ah, oh, geez. My bad. Mm 
Neon. These are supposed to be on 501. I messed up my numbering scheme. And then 601 for these. Yeah, 601. Whoops. It doesn't exactly matter, but I have a couple macros that base the name of a group off of the range that the fixtures are in. Stream, see, it's weird because uh, OBS says zero dropped frames. So if OBS is showing zero frames, I think it's a YouTube thing. showed up on your recommended yeah I'm not one of those people who asks you to like turn notifications on I think those people are annoying website notification social media notification got a notification sick that's awesome schedule sub box I knew about it got a notification 20 in Cool. Oh, you set an alarm for the stream. That is some real dedication. So I'm going to post the Twitch in the chat once again. And again, next week, we'll, um, we'll, try, we'll, try the, we'll try the Twitch first, Twitch live stream, and then publish to YouTube after the stream is done. Do you guys like my, uh, whoops, my cup? All these streams in Capture, I thought you were going to be learning Vectorworks. I mean, do you want to watch a stream of me learning how to use Vectorworks? I sit in front of the computer for like six hours, just like slowly clicking around and like pulling up YouTube tutorials. So I make tutorials on stuff that I know how to do, and I'm learning capture right now. So it wouldn't make sense for me to do a stream about Vectorworks. That's why. The process of channeling is about the same in Vectorworks, though, as it is in um, in Capture. It's not that much quicker. The only difference being um, with with Vectorworks, one of the one of the big advantages is the navigation pane and being able to gray out certain classes and do box selections, and then use the spotlight numbering tool for like left to right, and then top to bottom. Like, I'm decent at Vectorworks right now, but I'm not going to, like, start making tutorials on it. Mainly because there are some really good tutorials out there already. I don't know what's going on in my neighborhood. It's pretty weird. Yeah, shut up, Becky. So continuing on here, it's just taking a while because I'm, like, talking to people while I'm doing it. So let's do our ELARs next. I think what I might do, I might cheat and set these all to the same address for now. Okay, so we'll do this as channel 1601. Actually, I'll just continue. Or we could do groups. I want to see how much more useful I can make groups, because I haven't done anything with them yet in Capture. Euler ring one.
Yeah, move boy. There's there's so many useful tools in capture or sorry in um, in Vectorworks for the three D like um, the three D component of design and and working with stages. That it makes it makes doing any of those things in capture stupid. Like if you have both capture and Vectorworks, like I do, doing any of this like positioning or building these this geometry should not be done in capture in my opinion i would much rather do it in vectorworks where i can have a mirror tool i can have all of my 3d modeling tools and extruding and everything export that to dwg and import it into capture and then do all of the visualization in capture so because that's really what my workflow is right now It's also um, one thing I want to point out is this whole process that I'm doing right now is really only applicable if you need to physically build the stage. We could literally just select the whole stage and patch them to an address. And as long as the addresses don't overlap, we could throw that into uh, MA or any other software and program it just fine. But yeah, I'm not going to put up a Vectorworks tutorial when I've been using it for only a few months. So yeah, if you need exact geometry and a bunch of 3D modeling tools, Capture has, has no tools for that, really. You have this... Uh, generic objects in the forms category. Those are your 3D modeling tools. <laughs> That's it. You got to do everything else externally. So Vectorworks has all that built in, but it has a crap visualizer. In my opinion, I don't like it. I don't know anybody who like actually likes vision. It just doesn't look as good. One more ring. And then we can export this to MA. I want to get to the level with Vectorworks that I am with MA before I start doing any sort of videos with it. Yeah, I think you're right. The highlight visual is kind of annoying in Capture. But it is good. OK, I will say that it's good for seeing when you've accidentally selected something way off in space. Because in, um, in Vectorworks, you basically get an orange outline over the objects themselves. But if you accidentally click something like way, way far away, this is a very quick way to see. Like if I accidentally selected this ELAR while I was doing all of these, now it becomes a lot easier to see that I messed up the selection, except now I can't even find which one. There it is. Is there a way to turn off the highlight? Let me see here. There must be. Is 
selection color. No, because that's just for the grid, right? Hmm. Plot transformation shadow strength. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, this should be eight instead of seven. Now I think we, if we start at 1501, yeah, that'll be good. Those people just talked for 20 minutes. Hey, Florian. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so we've got our channels for those. The only thing we have left to do is the spikies. No, wait, those already have a channel. I was reading the group. Huracans are good, the VLs. Okay. This is where the highlight really sucks. Like on a red fixture. I'm going to add that to my list of gripes about capture. I'm making a video about my least favorite things about capture and the most favorite things. But I'm going to add that to the list. I never realized how much I hated it until you just pointed it out. Yeah, I've seen the new the new uh, address tool in um, in the new Vectorworks 2020. I only have 2019 though, and it's a total pain. I think I was going to set these to 301. Yep. All right, now you guys want to see my uh, my trick for these ELARs so that we don't waste our time. Remember our filter? I'm just going to clone it. Say ELARs only. <laughs> uh. This is another huge strength of... Um, look at how many ELARs, my goodness. That is just crazy. I'm just going to do this for the channels. I don't care about... No, when you're, when you're designing a stage, you're, you're the one who picks the fixture types. That's like half of your job, is figuring out what is available.
All right, let's uh, do some more universes. <laughs> this might be more than 42. I think that's what I said, right? Yeah, Scott, that's one of the videos that I think I'm going to do for... I might do it as a live stream or just like a, a video of all the old shows that I have. I have footage of all the old shows that I used to do back in Montana. Pretty funny. Okay, so we'll do the rings. This is where it's going to come in handy for these groups, I believe. So if I do fixture group, spiky ring one, Elar ring one. Um, oh, we need to set our channel mode. Mode one, standard RGB. Stilos uh, or Steli only have one mode which is how it should always be. I love the fact that the Axiom and the Stilos only have one mode for like small fixtures like that, that are a beam, basically. I understand having different modes for LED battens, stuff like that. Uh, again, we'll just max out the modes for now. So that if anything gets substituted in, we can easily swap it out without having to do a whole lot of business. I love it. 16 bit mode, 23 channels. That's awesome for that big light VL 6K. Okay, so let's do ring one now that we have all of our modes set across our fixtures. I made a little place for a front house as well. We'll build the, the risers later. I do kind of like the fixture groups thing. I wasn't originally sold on it 100%. Oops. Spiky ring, Elar ring. I have a feeling we're going to be occupying two universes here. Let's see. Yeah. So if we were to do this in the real world, I would probably have... I don't want to do it this way, but I might have to split it up per fixture type. If I was doing this, this in the real world, this would probably have to be split into two halves. We'd have a lower half and an upper half. And the top half would have both the Elars and the Spikies in this one universe. But... I would have to go through and reselect them all individually like this, and I don't really want to do that through this truss right now. Even with the uh, even with the addressing, I mean, let's just do it real life. Screw it. So we go to here. Full on YOLO, 286, deal. Oh, add this one on the end. I'm gonna add this to my list of gripes, that little toolbar that shows up. I deselect with control and uh, select with shift so I'm holding down shift right now and if I accidentally select the wrong order of things just unclick with control and then with shift so universe 4 
universe five. You know what you could do? I might start doing this. I'm going to show you a, a trick that I just realized you can do. If you're in the process of patching things and you want to make your life a little easier, what you can do is you can add a filter to your addressing filter or um, rather remove all of the universes. Don't know if you can do this all at once. No. So as you go through these and add them, I have to reassert it. What? So I on the wrong, oh, I was on the wrong, whoops. So this way, as you patch fixtures, they disappear from your screen. Yeah, capture is more for like concepting and visualizing and doing design for not massively complex shows. When you get into complex things where things are layered over top of each other and you have like a big stage with a lot of data to manage and different people who are in charge of different departments, then it becomes much easier to use the, the tools in Vectorworks and how powerful it is. It's very powerful from the data management and plotting side of things. Whereas I think um, Capture's strength is in how it looks much um, better in the visualizer. And you don't have to, like, here's the other thing to note. In Capture, it's all one software. But with Vectorworks, you know, you've got to spend twice as much money to get a visualizer included as well with Vectorworks. And I don't have infinite money. I don't know about you guys. But by the same token, I mean, I say that, but then time is also money. So if, if you're working projects that have a high demand for accurate reporting, accurate plots, and I'm talking like 3D CAD level accurate, then Vectorworks is... Uh, Vectorworks is the way to go, and I've I've been really enjoying learning it. And maybe we'll do like a, a me messing around in Vectorworks stream, and you guys can all laugh at how bad I am at it. <laughs> I'm not like awful, but it annoys me sometimes with learning how to use it because there's so much to learn. But at the same time, like I realized that I was kind of overthinking things a lot with Capture. Do you guys think we can fit this all in one universe, this, these top two? Uh, if I was doing this in real life, they would be separate. So we'll do it separate. But now the real question is, what do I do with these? Yeah, those would be separate too. Stupid. Who designed this stage? Stupid. Actually, if I was really doing this stage, I would put these on the same universe. Nah, but someone would screw it up. Separate universes. I'm also just trying to get to that 42 universe count. Do these up here first. It 
it's not a noob question. I just don't own WYSIWYG. I own both Capture. I bought Capture first. WYSIWYG is ridiculously expensive, so I didn't buy that. And instead, I bought Vectorworks because the two of those combined is like the cost of WYSIWYG. There's no like, you know, magic reason why, except for the fact that I literally can't just buy all of the visualization software just so that I have them all. Yeah, there's no like secret reason why I have, you know, one type of software and then not another. And if I'm making videos about something, it's because I know how to use it. So I didn't make any capture videos until I had a pretty firm grasp on all the features. And for someone who was in the position that I was for, you know, the better part of two or three years where I had like, you know, small shows, eight universes and less, like sometimes even just one or two universes, um, capture is just really quick, really easy. And if I'm only dealing with lighting people, Anthony, thank you for the donation, man says, thanks for all the stream slash content, brother. Keep up the good work. Appreciate all the times. Your videos have helped save my arse in the past. I'm glad to help. Glad I could save your arse. Almost I thought I forgot to do the bottom row. I'll tell you what, I, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite pastimes is going to shows that I'm not involved in and guessing the parameter counts. Because universes are way different than parameters. In fact, I'm going to guess extended mode with all of these fixtures individually patched. We could do... Hmm. Na, 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 na. I'm going to guess that this stage is 14,000 parameters. That's my guess. Anybody else want to uh, wager a, a guess? We'll put it into MA and we'll find out. Like I've, I've got MA ready to go with my template uh, prep file builder. Maybe it's less. I might have overdone it. It's probably going to be like 11,000. I'm amending. I'm amending. I'm amending it to 11,000. I haven't read any comments, so it's legal. So now here, this is where you kind of have to experiment and say, okay, what exactly can I get away with? Can this section be a universe? Because they're physically close. 
maybe it makes sense to do entire lines. But let's let's see where we land here. Are you guys seeing this? It's 512. <laughs> oh my god. That's so cool. <laughs> what is up with this show? I have to keep it like that. Wow, you guys are time coding the hour long. Like, I can't. Uh, I appreciate it. I just, I, I wish I could subtitle everything. But uh, the fact that you guys are doing that is greatly appreciated. It's tough because um, I'd like to pay people to do it. Like Nicholas, I, I paid him to to do the German subtitles and he spent like six hours on one of the videos. I just feel bad because I can't afford to like have every single video, especially if they're like hour plus. Oh, Jerry. With the 1099 euro, just wanted to follow up on the donation. Also, thank you for all the content. Curious to know if you remember when we met at ProLight and Sound 2018. The guy from the Ayrton booth. I can't recall it exactly. I apologize. I'm really bad with names and faces, and especially at a trade show. It's like my eyes glaze over, and I meet so many people it's very very difficult to keep up sometimes so i apologize i feel extra bad if you're going to donate and i can't remember exactly meeting you ma3 classes are free on the act website until june i think there's a do you know if there's a, a code for it i can't remember i'm also gonna have to add some uni universes i'm gonna land at 42 just to see Add, add. I don't know if we're going to get to the 42 that I predicted. I think we'll be close, maybe like 38. My original prediction was 42 universes, 11,000 parameters. I like this new addressing filter. I can't believe I haven't done this before. <laughs> Makes it easy to uh, just take a glance and know. Keep in mind, we also have to do motion control universe. Oh. And then in the real world for this situation, I would just put a splitter at the bottom of every section and then run an individual opti line so you don't have to zigzag back and forth. It like matters a lot, but keep doing it that way. Not that it like matters. Um, the reason why I select fixtures that way instead of um, instead of doing it like sequentially, physically in order is due to the way that MA patches things, and it's just a holdover from uh, my time as someone who manually patched a bunch of things. All right, this is where we're going to have some interesting arrangements. I think if I split this up into halves, that'll be our best bet. get rid of this LED screen and the filter. It's kind of messing up my vibe. 
210, so we can fit that whole... Okay. For some reason, I thought we were going to get closer. Addressing, LED screen, goodbye. Bye-bye. I'm going to see, and plus, I think on Twitch, um, well, I get, it's it's just tough to decide if I want to stream on Twitch and then, like, maybe find a music. This is on my list of least favorite things about Capture, is if you accidentally double-click during your selection, then it will undo everything that you just did. Okay, I can breathe again. Should be 420. How is this happening with this stage? I literally like literally did not intend for any of that. Yeah, there's no control Z for selection. There's no oops button for those. <laughs> How do your tilt position presets work on circular truss? They don't. They don't. You just have to um if you use embedded presets and you run across situations like that, then um, you can update the you can update those embedded presets directly rather than just the embedded ones. If that makes sense. So if you have your uh, your main position presets stored as embedded presets from your pan and tilt positions that only have pan and tilt in them, then I suppose you could. Right, again, I'm not a Lua guy. I need to also learn Lua. There's not enough downtime for me to learn all this stuff, I don't think. Especially not while streaming. But uh, I believe if you had that information, both the pan and tilt information, and then the position and the offsets, then you should be able to make a Lua math calculator that determines your new pan and tilt values. OK, so main part of the stage is done. We're not going to get quite to 42. We'll get to like 36, it looks like with all of our lasers and everything. That's OK. Just would have been funny. Unless for some reason this takes up more channels than I know it will then I know it will three fifty seven another nice number oh. I think that it might oh no Oh no. Oh no. Oh my goodness.
420 haze it. Yeah, if I wanted to win my 42 universe bet, I guess I could uh, I could add a, a universe for hazers and then a universe for CO2. I think that capture should come up with an add-on for effects. <laughs> I, after I like spent the whole last stream trashing companies who like make add-on packages. I think it's okay for like special effects, like fireworks, cryo, anything like that. I think that's cool to have as an add-on. But like having the modules like way too separated or like way too many modules is kind of a weird business model to me. Then maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just complaining because I can't afford all of the expensive modules. You know what? I think that's what it is. I'm just bitching. Drink water, gang. Oh man, I have to flip these over. Oh shit. Ugh. These are facing the wrong way. Even though they're um even though they're just truss warmers. It's still kind of necessary to have them facing the right direction for the visualizer. So, remember that Elar filter that we made? Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yes. 180 degrees. And then I believe we will just need to shift. Yeah. So here's another fun little trick. If I have my addressing filter up over here and then my Elars filter on this and then move this camera move this camera oh I just touched my eyeball I'm gonna die if I select all these and then come over here and then adjust them accordingly to where they're supposed to be. Save some time. And then you can te test that with, again, a third. There we go. Much better.
I wasn't counting on those um, those big central angled pieces on the actual uh, main stage section. I wasn't counting on those landing right at 512. I thought those were going to have to split up into at least two universe. Well, I thought those were going to have to split up into two universes per section. And I also would have been very mad if they would have been at like 515 addresses. That would have made up for eight extra universes and we would have landed at like 42. It's okay. Yeah, we would have landed at 42. <laughs> exactly. Because we would have had eight extra universes over there to split them up. No matter. Okay, we're patched with the exception of our lasers. I'm just gonna patch them so that I can increase my universe count. <laughs> ah, I can't patch them? Why not? That doesn't make any sense. Sometimes It's just crazy the things that they consider fixtures in in this software so i just don't understand it sometimes i guess that's how they define the difference between a media fixture and a fixture because a media fixture can't have an address but a fixture can't have a a media texture applied to it Ugh. Time to save the file. Good call. Good call. Um, now let's do our... DMX movers. So rotate, tilt, and vertical. Throw those into... Another universe. GG. Really should avoid using letters like I and O for universes and stuff, just because they look like ones and zeros, and Zs look like twos sometimes. So if I was doing this on a real show, I wouldn't include those. of these. So we're at 35 universes. Let's export these to an XML file and throw it into MA. So I'm going to switch over here just because I want to make sure I can do this without showing too much of the random stuff that's on my desktop.
Okay. So I'll select all of the fixtures that I want to include in our patch when we send it over to MA. Highlight everything, make sure everything is selected, nothing weird, no stragglers. I go to File, Export Fixture Data. And I'm going to throw this onto Program Data. Oops. MA Lighting Technology, Technologies, Grand MA, 3.7, and then we'll go to uh, Layers, Fixture Layers, changes to XML, and then we can uh, label this as Core. Selected Objects Only, and then Fixture Types. Fixture types. I have a video on this part already, but I figured we'd just do it here anyways. Continue. So now, over in MA, I've got these uh, macros set up. Uh, core. And it imports all of them. And then I can, from here, go ahead and this is the one part that you have to do manually right now. And that is swapping out the fixture type. So ELR 108 in 10, or 180 in 10 channel. And then while I'm also in here, I go over and change the color. This is what shows up on your layout views. And then also it's like the gel color if you have conventional fixtures in here. So I'll just go through and highlight these real quick. This uh, That color is taken from the screen color. I believe it's either screen color or paper color. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's screen color. Okay, we'll go in here. Huracan. I might have to download some of these profiles. Yeah, I do. Excuse me. I'm going over to MA Fixture Share. I'm just going to download it. By Michael Ferris. Mad Lad. Let's hope it works. Probably going to have to do this with the uh, Stelos as well, because I'm on an older. Older file version, 3.7. So I'm just going to download that while I fixed physical values in RGB. OK. Sounds good to me. Downloaded, I think. Did it download? I'm doing this off screen. You guys can't see. Sorry. And then um, I think we should be good on everything else. Maybe the VL6000. Oops. Download blocked. Why is it saying, OK, allow yeah, download. It's got the Verilite. Grabbing the Stelos. Stelos. And 
then I'm just going to copy all of those into the library folder instead of the fixture layers folder. Okay. Why is this not working? Elars, Huracans. Oh, you know what? This is probably a fixture profile from uh, a newer software version. Yep, that's it. Okay, so let me download. I could go in and edit the XML to show that it's an earlier number, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. Let's see if the Stelos one. Ah, yeah, I gotta use 3.8. Do I have 3.8 on here? On PC, I don't even think I have 3.8 on here. Uh, it's annoying. Let's just do it. You know you're lazy when you would rather just download 3.8 than uh, edit the XML. Go to the archive, 3.8 on PC, accept and download. Then I got to download MA3D. Oh my God. So what I'm going to do now is change all these to just dimmers for the moment. Actually, no, I can't even do this. I'm going to have to redo this process. So save this as our show prep 2020. And then we'll have to install 3.8 real quick. Yeah, on my laptop, I have all of these installed, like from 3.1 to 3.9 now. But on my desktop, since I only program in 3.7, the console's naturally in 3.7. It also has all the most recent software versions on it. Um, yeah. See you later, trademark. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, extracting bitmaps. What is my secondary monitor called? It's a, uh, I don't know. It's one of the Asus gaming monitors flipped on its side. It's like vertical. Yeah, I do all of my timecode programming, all my busking programming. I program everything in 3.7 because that's the most common old software that I'll run into. 
if I come up to a show where I cannot downgrade the software. Yeah, you can have you can have any you can have multiple versions installed on the MA. I have on that one um 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 installed. I don't I haven't done 3.9 on it yet. And then same on the laptop. Then I program in 3.7 because you can't go down in software version. You can only go up after you save a show. So if I run into a show that has a 3.7 desk and I don't either either don't have time to update it or can't update it for whatever reason, then I can still run my show. That's why. Oh, did I just run the MA3D ins installer? Of course I did. Brilliant. I am very smart. It's exciting to see how things have changed. First and last console I did any of this on was a 088 Bullfrog. Nice. Ugh. Yeah, everything from this point on in the stream is going to be all free software. So you can literally go to the MA website, download section, Grand MA2, software. And then I went down to the archive for 3.8. <sighs> Sorry, I had not foreseen this hiccup. I think 60% here might be Dutch. <laughs> Possibly. There's a lot of Dutch people in the chat. The number of Americans is almost uh, negligible. No, I'm just kidding. It's about 50% Americans, I would say, and 50% rest of the world. But um, as far as like subscribers go. But uh, the number of chat depends, the number in chat depends on what time it is in the various parts of the world. That's why I stagger the stream times. Yeah, this will be nice. This uh, this is the last stream of the week. We've got Patreon stream tomorrow, and then time code streams Tuesday and Wednesday. That'll give me enough time to get Twitch set up. So again, if you're interested in going and using or and uh, following me on Twitch, I'll paste that in here. Yeah, there's a lot of Germans. You guys watch no matter what time. I've realized. I get people who complain like. Even if I wake up at 8 a.m. and do a stream so you guys can watch in the afternoon, I'll get people on the other side of the world complaining about what time the stream is. <laughs> I can't win. Yeah, there's a lot of Germans, Italians, uh, Dutch, English. Yeah, I'm planning on, um, if things go according to plan on a global scale, I would like to spend the next year doing as many trade shows as possible. So ProLite is on the list. Plaza is on the list. Nam is on the list. Top tier live stream right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. This year I have like two main clients that I'm working with, kind of a third-ish. Um, the schedule was completely full this year. This like my calendar, I had maybe two weekends between now and January where I had free time. Now I don't have anything booked. Well, I do later in the year. The rescheduled dates for a lot of these shows, they're still kind of in the air. Look at how cool that the Boca 
and the twinkling razor lights look. Is that not cool? And the little reflection. Oh my god. Pro streamer status. I am going to be a pro streamer. Just watch. I'm just kidding. Okay. So we're back. Let me uh, go ahead. Oh wait, is it done yet? Yes, it's completed. Make sure there's nothing weird in the background here. Save show file. Let's run MA3. While this is happening, I'm going to reboot my MA. Just so that I can put it into 3.8 mode. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm not going to steal any of your work. Oh, I forgot to include the third party licenses. Okay, uh, this is 3.8. Yeah, cool. So now I'll have to go in and change our layers again. I'll just go dig that out of the 3.7 folder. Don't mind me. Fixture layers, core, 3.8. Okay. Seven objects imported. Sweet. Do our ELARs. Sorry, I'm watching to wait for my MA to prompt me for the correct streaming. Select installed streaming, 3.8, quit. OK, that's rebooting in 3.8. Change our color, blah, blah, blah. Reset to white, Huracan X. This is just for the layout view, so it looks a lot nicer. Reset to white, Stelos, reset to white. Oh my goodness. Huracan. See if it's built in. It's not. <laughs> so I still have to import it. Ah. I just have to go copy it. 3.7. Library. Jesus. Three point eight library. Now I got to close out of this window. It's really very simple. MA is very simple. Hey, there we go. JDC in six channel. I have my own profile back in an earlier version. I might. Uh, let me see. Good lord. Yeah, MA is to lighting programming as Vectorworks is to <laughs> lighting plots and paperwork. So I need to get as good. I need to get I need to get good at Vectorworks. Give me like give me like two more months. And I'll start making Vectorworks videos. Yeah, 08 is pretty bad for live work. Yeah, each version has a separate file directory.
I haven't done any training on MA or capture. It's all self-taught. Oh, it's so slow. Uh, there is a folder, or there was a folder. Let me pull it up here. For some reason, I'm not sure if this was because it was the way Grand MA used to do it, but there is a folder called GMA2 that has a lot of this stuff, and I'm not sure if this works between versions. Because, like, over in the Grand MA folder, there's folders for everything else, but maybe this is from earlier installation versions. I'm actually not sure on that one. And of course, mine isn't in here. It's on the console, though. JDC 68 channel, we'll just deal with it when we get to it. Spiky mode standard. Sunstrip active. <laughs> VL6000. Cool. Okay, now when we exit out, we'll be able to see our amount of parameters. Am I crazy good at parameter counts or what? Eleven thousand one hundred and ninety six. Mm. What's up, YouTube? Eleven thousand. My bet was eleven thousand. In case you were wondering or couldn't remember. That's like the only successful thing I've done in the last two and a half hours. Yeah, VJs aren't allowed in here. No VJs. Um, all right, so now that I've imported those, I can make groups from them. I can make layouts and make worlds. And that's it. And that's the prep file. Wait, where did the 3D go? Oh, no. Where did the 3D go? I only have 4,096 parameters. I'm, I'm looking at buying an NPU, though, or two. What the f What happened? Why is there no XYZ? I exported it. Did, the, did it break? Is there something broken in the new update? You get 2048 with an NSP. And then the console is 4,096, but consoles require NPUs if you want to add more. I'm so confused. I'm gonna I'm gonna look in the XML. Because the whole point of doing that exercise is to translate everything into MA3D. Yeah, software happened. Something happened. So if I go to fixture layers,
It's in here. All the XYZ is in here. Yeah, I know 3.9 is out. I'm just using 3.8 because that was what the fixture types needed. And I don't like going up to the latest, latest. Unless I need to. I'll probably I'll probably install it on all of my machines today, 3.9. But MA is the one piece of software that I never, almost never, do any programming in the most latest version. I'll install it and I'll like shift everything up and save versions of it for that show, but I do all the programming in an older version just because if you've ever shown up to a place where you like can't update the software for whatever version or you don't have time and you go to load in your show file and the desk is running one version lower, that only happens to you once and then you never get screwed by it again because you are you swear you will never have a really old show file or a really new show file ever again. So I program in 3.7 because you can only shift programming upwards and then I keep versions on my on the disk with the latest like three or four versions. I'm really confused because it's in here. You can see all of the X, Y, Z. Maybe you guys can't because the stream is, the stream quality might not be high enough for you to see. Let me let me try something here. I'm going to clear out the we'll go we'll, we'll go into hacker mode here. Whoops. CD 11. Okay, so now we have no fixture types, no layers, no nothing. And I'm going to import the generic dimmer. But not bring it in. And then... Delete all these except for the dimmer. Oh no, I'm actually gonna delete this too. No fixture types at all. Delete that layer. Okay, no nothing, nothing. Just the dimmer as it is when you start fresh. And then we'll run the macro again. Whoops. Yes. Okay. One more time. There, X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and X, Y, Z. It's weird because they were, uh, the Q picks can have X, Y, and Z. I don't know why it didn't show in there. I think it's because I accidentally saved that file, the prep file that had some information from another patch in it still. Just gotta make sure to delete everything before I resave the, before I resave it. 
That's okay. Now we know. Oh. Sunstrip. Wow. That's the first time that hasn't worked for me in like over a year. So I hadn't even considered that it could be messed up. Otherwise, I would just go over here and look. You know? And now I'll just add that to my default way of checking. Ta-da. Yeah, that's much better. However, uh, there are some issues between capture and um, capture and MA and like every other 3D positioning program. The Z and Y values are like swapped. It doesn't really matter too much for me, uh, and I'll do this offline, but I have a spreadsheet in a Google Doc or a Google Sheets that you copy this data from, uh, let's say, let's pull up MA3D here. You can copy spreadsheet data into MA3D and so if you sort everything by channel number, then we'll go and add this. I mean, network configuration. Maybe it's not set up properly. File, settings, network. No. Yes. Three point eight. I'm gonna get off pretty soon. Maybe a couple more minutes. Fifteen minutes, probably stream. Okay, now let's see if this will pop up. Okay. So as you can see, a lot of the stuff imports properly, but there are little things like the rotations. Like all the positions are fine, but the rotations are like messed up. So I have uh, a spreadsheet that does all the fixing for that, but that's a whole like process of copying and pasting and yeah. Do I ever argue with a VJ? Not really, except for you know maybe tell a few of them to not be so aggressive with certain color combinations or strobing. Some people like get out of hand a little bit and they overdo things. Yeah. Uh, favorite non-essential feature that you've incorporated into the show file? Cryo timer, e-stop, etc. Um, hmm. I would say probably. I don't know. 
I don't really use the cryo timer too much. Maybe like festivals I'll use that, but for normal like touring shows, don't use it. Um, and I just use that as a way to be like, well, you said we had a minute of CO2 and this says I only got 30 seconds. So I guess that's useful, but not like favorite. I don't really have a favorite little random thing I've added. I would say probably the, well, I mean, most of it's essential. That's the thing. Things like uh, the macros that rename songs, so I don't have to rename a bunch of different items. Those are cool. Yeah, we'll hang out for like five more minutes, then I think I'm gonna go through my spreadsheet and just copy paste values to fix the sun strips. And then uh, I'll upload the show file to maybe the Google Drive or something with the updated positions. And then what's also nice is you can then export the capture um, 3D. Oop, sorry, didn't mean, forgot to switch you over. Um, yeah, so I'll probably do that. And I'm going to spend the rest of the day getting the Twitch stream set up and get like some overlays and stuff made. Yeah, and then t ne uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll do the, we'll finish up the battlefields. Time code. Yeah. All right, I think we'll finish the stream on a strong note. We got everything transferred over. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go continue to do some work on, on setting up um, for next week's streams. So thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, I'll stay in the chat for a little bit. So feel free to hang out. I'll stay out in the, I'll stay in the, the YouTube chat and um, yeah, answer some questions. And we'll talk a little bit for a few more minutes there. Yeah, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.